Hello everyone and welcome to this new lecture in the series of Mathematics for Machine Learning. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about different topics in probability and the agenda is to gain a working understanding on probability by the end of this lecture so that you can use this knowledge on your machine learning or data science project. So please consider subscribing to the channel and dropping a like below and without any further delay, let's get started. Let's quickly discuss this probability theory part and if we go by the simple definition then it says probability is simply an estimate that how likely an event may happen. If we go by this figure right here then we need to understand that probability for an event ranges between the score of 0 to 1. Probability of 1 means there is 100% chances for the occurrence of an event and similarly probability of 0 denotes that that chances are very much against of the occurrence of that particular event. So the more you go towards the right direction means that you are more confident around the occurrence of that particular event. And if you go towards the left direction, then it means you are more confident around that the event will not happen. Let's explore further the idea of event and sample spaces. So it is denoted like this that probability of an event is equals to the number of outcomes for an event divided by the number of outcomes in a sample space. Of course, this will not make much sense for you if probability is a new topic for you. So let me give you an explanation by an example. So let's say that probability of an event is probability of getting heads when you are tossing a coin. It should be equal to the number of outcomes of an event. So as we can understand, if you toss a coin, you will either get a heads or tails. You cannot get both at once divided by number of outcomes in a sample space. This simply means that the sum of all the possible events, which means heads and tails equals to two, which essentially means if you're tossing a coin, there is a 50% chance that you will achieve heads. And of course, the coin has to be unbiased for that. Another example would be throwing a dice where you want to check the probability of getting number three. So of course we know that when we are throwing a dice, there will be only one outcome out of all the possible six outcomes within the sample space. So I hope that the idea of events and sample spaces is now clear for you. Now let's move further and explore some more interesting things. Let's explore the idea of multiple independent observations. And before we cover this topic, I think I should give you a basic explanation on independent and dependent observation. So let's try to understand that over here. Let's first talk about an independent observation. An example for an independent observation would be tossing a coin. It is because let's say that in the first toss you get a heads then in the second toss the outcome will not be impacted by the outcome of your first toss which means in the second toss there will be 50 50 percent chances of achieving a heads or tails and this is a perfect example of an independent observation similarly if we talk about a dependent observation then let's say that i am asking you what is the probability of taking out the card of queen from the deck of cards of course so far you have understood that since you are taking out only one card out of 52 cards the probability of taking out a queen will be 1 by 52 and again second time if i am asking you that what is the chances of taking out another queen in that case of course you are taking out only one card this time as well but this time out of 51 cards which means the probability of the same event is impacted by the first observation so i hope that this has given you a fundamental understanding around independent and dependent observations so i will try to quickly erase it and let's come back to the topic of multiple independent observations so what if i ask you that what is the probability of achieving two consecutive heads for tossing a coin twice in that case two consecutive heads becomes the only event that we want to achieve so of course we will have one on the top divided by four because two tosses will possibly have these four outputs you can have either two heads or heads then tails or tails then heads or you can also get two consecutive tails as well and all we care about this particular event out of these four this is why the probability of two consecutive heads becomes one by four which is nothing but 25 percent similarly if i will ask you that what is the probability of achieving three consecutive heads then three tosses will have 
these eight events in the sample space so one two three four five six seven and eight and out of these eight possible events we have only one event which has three consecutive heads so the probability of three consecutive heads will be one by eight because we have only one event within our sample space of eight events which has three consecutive heads and similarly if i will ask you that what is the probability of throwing exactly two tails in three tosses then the probability will be three out of eight and why is that because if you will pay attention to our sample space then we have exactly three events where we have two tails so first is over here this one second is over here where we have two tails and the third is right here this one could not be considered because we want to have exactly two tails and we have three tails over here so this cannot be considered and the probability of throwing at least two heads in three tosses will be four by eight so we want to have at least two heads which means we may also have an event where we have the number of heads more than twice so this will be first where we have at least two heads this is second this is third and this is fourth so out of all the eight events within the sample space these are the four events where we have at least two heads all right so we are also done with the topic of multiple independent observations now let's try to understand about the topic of combining probabilities so let's say if i'm asking you that what is the probability of achieving five consecutive heads in that case you do not need to manually calculate the entire sample space what you can simply do as a shortcut that you can multiply the probability of two consecutive heads that we calculated earlier with the probability of three consecutive heads and multiplying both of these will give you the probability of five consecutive heads which will be 1 by 32. This method is also called as the multiplicative rule for independent event. So please keep this thing in mind because you may get asked this topic in the interview as well. I would highly suggest if you keep on taking notes from this lecture or if taking screenshots is your way to go then please feel free to do that as well because by the end of this lecture you may gain a very good understanding around all the topics that we are going to discuss but you may also tend to forget the topics later on so you need something as a notes or revising material so please either consider taking notes or keep on taking the screenshots you can go with either of the ideas so we have just discussed about the concept of multiplicative rule for independent events. So let's quickly also cover the multiplicative rule for dependent events as well. So if you remember the previous example of taking out a card from the deck of cards, it is the same kind of situation over here as well. So let's say you have been given a question that what is the probability of taking out two cards first is ace and the second is a queen so that will be calculated as the probability of taking out an ace from the deck of card and multiplied by the probability of taking out a queen provided the first event has happened so it will be 1 by 52 because you are checking the probability of taking out the ace from the deck of cards which has 52 cards and after the occurrence of first event you will have only 51 cards left from where you are checking the probability of taking out a queen so multiplying both of these probabilities will give you the actual probability of taking out an ace then a queen and this method is called the multiplicative rule for dependent event so i hope the idea of multiplicative rule for independent event and dependent event is clear to you if yes then let's move forward otherwise i would suggest that you go through this particular topic one more time and then i believe it will be definitely clear for you all right now let's explore the concept of mutually exclusive and non-mutually exclusive event so as an example of mutually exclusive event we can consider these two examples first is tossing a coin and second is throwing a dice of course when you are tossing a coin doesn't matter how many times you are tossing it the output will not be impacted by the previous one on the other side if we talk about a non-mutually exclusive event then let's try to understand this by this particular example where i'm saying as a weather prediction is it going to be sunny tomorrow or will it rain so over here of course there is some chances of the weather being sunny the next day and it also might rain but remember there is also a chance that it might be sunny and rain both within the same day so we will also have to consider that possibility as well 
and this will be a perfect example for non mutually exclusive event so in that case the probability of the weather being sunny or raining will be equals to the probability of the weather being sunny plus the probability of the weather being raining excluding the probability of the weather being sunny and raining at the same day so this is the situation that we do not want to consider or we do not want to check the probability for this is why we are excluding it by doing a minus and all we want to check is the probability for the weather being sunny or raining on the other hand if you will check the probability of a heads or tails within the category of mutually exclusive event it will be either heads or tails there is no chances of both the events occurring at the same time like the situation we had over here and adding the probability of both the events it will be 0.5 plus 0.5 is equals to 1 which means there is a 100% chance of you will either achieve a heads or tails when you are tossing a coin there isn't going to be any outcome out of these two events that we are trying to check the probability for and with this explanation we have finally come to the end of this particular lecture i hope that it helped you to understand the concepts of probability event sample space independent and dependent events etc and hopefully you will also feel comfortable and confident around using these concepts or ideas in your further data science preparation drop a like below if you have found this lecture helpful consider subscribing to the channel if you are new to the channel and hopefully we will meet again in the next lecture thank you very much for your time today take care